This should be the first video that you watch on this channel if you're getting into braid speedrunning. I'm just about to explain the little video game quirks that are specific to braid, which will help a lot when you're watching my other videos because you'll understand the terminology properly. Let's start with the 10 frame rule. Assuming you're not a retard, you're running the game at 60 FPS, so every one second, 60 frames go by. Starting on the very first frame that Tim goes from standing on a platform to falling off of it, he's still allowed to jump for 9 more frames in most applications, but more affectionately 10 frames for the most useful ones. Braid takes us very literally because there are many places in the run that play with this rule in fun and special ways. Notably, if you rewind inside of a moving platform, you will stand on the top of it when you let go of shift without the need for a jump. The next trick is only possible because of the 10 frame rule, and it appears 3 times throughout the game is ladder jumps. There are three important ladders in the game that allow Tim to start climbing them while standing on a mid-ladder platform. Remember that leaving a surface grants you 10 extra frames of jumping privileges. Well luckily beginning a climb onto a ladder also works the same way as running straight off the ground. For the first 10 frames that you're on these ladders you can jump off them as though you were standing on something solid. <coughs> the only exception is the ladder in 5-4 which is so high up that you can only do the trick by jumping on the last two possible frames. It plays out a bit like Goldilocks, the way that there's three ladder jumps in Braid. One of them's really easy, one of them's fairly tricky, and the other one's really hard. This isn't much of a speedrun trick, but it could pave the way for more consistent setups for stuff. You can press jump 12 frames before you land on the ground, and it will still jump. This is mainly known as buffering, but it's sometimes known as input queuing, but that's not really important. The next one saves a lot of time with almost no effort at all, and not to mention most of these also have their own little consistent visual cues. Boosting is possible in this game when Tim's shoes or the back of his head land on the rounded edge of a surface, or the corner. They're called edge boosts and head boosts respectively. Also, jumping on any downward sloping surface will boost you forward, but jumping into an incline will slow you down, so try not to jump on an upward slopes. The only exceptions are when you're on an incredibly steep ground, like in 6-7, the bridge, and when your jump will not end on the incline. So it starts uh, on the slope, but it ends at the top or on the other side of it. All head boosts increase your speed by pretty much the same amount at the cost of just a little bit of height. Depending on where you land on the ground, however, you can get around four different types of edge boost. Number one is pathetic and barely noticeable, or minimum X. Number two is like this kind of slippery one, or like mid X. And you can get a big boost, or TAS X. And finally, a huge one, or maximum X. Minimum X is usually only possible on surfaces with a unique hitbox such as certain moving platforms, and it really even matters outside of 4.7 anyway. The boost that you'll probably become most familiar with is number 2, mid-X. For general surfaces, it is the easiest one to get, and also the least impactful. The huge or maximum X boost is very special. It's the only one that depends on your vertical speed before you hit the corner of a surface, but it demonstrates another slightly detrimental quirk of braid, which is that you aren't allowed to jump while you're moving too fast. Any maximum X boost will bring you to this maximum speed, and no matter how long it takes you to land, if you maintain the speed off of this boost, you won't even be able to buffer your next jump. This is why I call number 3 TAS X, but first I have to explain another trick. The TAS jump. If you haven't seen the braid TAS, the link is in the description. Pause the video right now and watch it, it's fascinating. One of the main reasons the task is so much faster is because it's a very, very precise way of abusing the 10 frame rule. After a task X boost only, Tim actually lands on the corner of the surface for a frame and gets a respectable speed boost at the same time, so having landed enables the jump key for the next 10 frames. The only reason this isn't being implemented by most runners is that during these 10 frames, the opposite direction must be pressed for between 0 to 3 of those frames before the jump. Any task jump in which the task turns around more than once in midair is generally considered to be impossible to find a setup for, because it's got too many variables at that point. But task jumps such as the epilogue and in 5.3 have recently been worked on and used in various runs.
The jump input is always performed as an edge jump, and it's completely in midair. Last but not least is momentum. After a ground or ledge boost, including task jumps but excluding maximum X, you should always jump once as soon as you can. This is the most noticeable when performing multiple jumps on downward slopes, and it's most important in, for example, fast 1-1. One -one. This momentum jump here keeps your speed higher for slightly longer and can often be the deciding factor in hitting the fast 1-1 one -one cycle. These tricks and quirks should heighten your braid knowledge as you begin to learn the run, and it will help you understand the guides a little bit better. I should add that if I ever forget to mention something in a guide video, scroll down to the comments and I will have corrected it. You'll probably also see Basetown, NCS calling the video epic and trying to scam me, so make sure you give him a nice thumbs up. Thanks for watching.